Hello, everybody, and welcome to the July 15th episode of Trips and Traps. I'm Andy Sterling, and Eric Donovan, thankfully, is back. Glad to be back. The batteries recharged and <laughs> a uh, one-week vacation down in uh, Maryland, ready for the Saratoga meet and ready for this episode of Trips and Traps. Yeah, we've got only two weeks left at Belmont, and uh, we're going to cover, of course, last week at Belmont. And we're going to start out the first episode. I think there are three races from the first day of uh, last mm-hmm. week, the 8th of July, and we're going to start out actually with a two-year-old race. Yeah, this is a uh, second race from uh, Wednesday. It's a state-bred uh, two-year-old filly race. We're looking at a couple of horses in here, both first-time starters. The one, Amiga Del Sol on the sixth, Nice and Naughty. Nice and Naughty is probably the one you want to look at for early, and Amiga that's all the one you want to look out for late. Yeah, the, the, these five furlong races, it's it's a very, they're tricky to watch. And there is the six, a uh, 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 nice and naughty, who does break a little bit slowly. But it's an odd situation. This has been a case forever at Belmont. Because of where they start and they start the turn, you don't go, not get an accurate vi- view of the gate from the TV cameras. There's nothing we can do about it. The only way, honestly, to do it, and some people do it, is you go all the way to the end of the grandstand. You actually align yourself with the gate and watch the break. It looks a lot different. Now, the one is sitting a perfect trip here, and that's Amiga Del Sol behind. Naughty, nice and naughty, however, makes that wide, premature move. Yeah, I think both horses kind of have uh, a little bit of a trouble trip here. So far, Amiga Del Sol is, is having a great trip, but uh, certainly uh, the six horse, Nice and Naughty, after breaking slow, making that wide move, uh, I think Nice and Naughty ran her race up to the quarter pole, and we see Amiga Del Sol kind of get a good trip. You know, if this was a, old, a race for older horses where you say, well, he's sitting behind the speed duel here, he's getting a perfect trip, that would be fine. But keep in mind, this is a first time starter, two year old. Things get a little tight here. He's trying to lug in a little bit or, or try to get out. Uh, I think the jock's trying to get her out a little bit. She's trying to lug in up against the rail and just not in a comfortable spot, I don't think, through the stretch. No, and this horse does run okay, absolutely, for a green horse, but a lot of things went well. You could say this race is a good education for a nice and naughty horse. I'm not sure what to do. A nice and naughty is a half to naughty in New York. Her sold for a couple hundred thousand dollars last year. I think it's Saratoga, actually. And, uh, you know, to see it running five furlongs first time out with that kind of pedigree, you can hardly expect the horse to win. Christophe Clement trains and not exactly a guy who unveils a lot of two year olds during the summer. Or especially at Belmont before he goes to Saratoga, or even at Saratoga. Not sure what to do with him, though. Did he really do any running? I, I thought the, the move he made around the turn, or she made around the turn, I thought that was a, a move that could prob- possibly propel her in her second start to move forward a little bit. I, I wasn't so sure that it wasn't a bad race from her. I, I know that you know horses got to get into the game early going five for once, but I thought she ran okay, could move forward with a little more distance. Right, well, at least she didn't show that she's some sort of bum that sort of sat in the back of the field right, and never nothing. did any running, because it's the truth of these two-year-olds. You, you want to see them do something during the race, and she did do something. Amiga Del Sol, she's going to be a short price her next start. Do you like her or not? I don't know. It depends. You know, I think you're going to get into a situation coming up where she runs next to the spy. You might have some classier first-time starters in the race from, from uh, some high-profile outfits that might take some money. Uh, I think you got to sit down and analyze how good Amiga Del Sol ran in this race. See how other horses might have come out of this race, too. Right. I'm not sure how good this race was. I'll see who she's in against. But she did get a good education. Anyway, we'll move on to another race. And this is one of our favorite races to do on Trips and Traps, the mile and an eighth inner turf races and these are races that once again trip is everything as you'll see the favorite in this race the four hanging by a thread gets the dream trip and set up the five my man lars a closer and that's the gray an easy horse to watch a horse that could have gotten a very good trip in here because you had a duel in here between mission approved and pennington the one and two horse in this race my man lars drops over the inside eh, it's steady mildly but that's not that's not meaningful and I don't blame the rider for this. I think my man Lars just got rank. Uh, I guess so. We're going to see my man Lars make a, a big middle move down the backstretch here as they uh, straighten out. You know, this is a, a quick, pretty quick pace in here. 23 flat, 48 flat uh, for the uh, quarter and half for a mile and eighth on the inner turf course. Doesn't get much faster than that. My man Lars, I think right now, pace-wise, in a good spot. But my man Lars is going to want to get into the game pretty soon. Right? Yeah, you know, I, I think this is what, when, 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 you, when you hear riders and trainers talk about being covered up, and there's my man Lars back, sort of back towards the picture. And the talk about being covered up is the feeling is you race them behind horse and they'll settle behind horses and not get eager like this. And when you put a horse out in the clear on the outside, as happened with my man Lars, very often they get over eager like this. And this was something that Ramon Dominguez talked about with Gio Ponte, who had that wide trip in the Man of War. And now he had him, there's nothing he could do, he was out in the clear. And he said a lot of horses, you know, they get their heads to them and they go forward and Gio Ponte did settle. My man Lars was unfortunately taken out in the clear and did not settle.
did not settle here. And then you can make a case also that the trip almost gets worse from here because my man Lawrence drops about a length or two back there and then comes up and has to make this four wide chasing move on the turn. So having to make that premature move on the back stretch and four wide move on the turn, I just think you, you know, he's up against it here and you see the winner of the race hanging by a thread get that perfect trip down inside. Right. I mean, the comparison between the two horses, and don't forget, after my man Lars just made that premature move, he dropped back again. He's right there with hanging by a thread, and there's hanging by a thread. He's just waiting until everybody who went wide sort of drops off, and he eases him out and just gets the easiest perfect trip of the, of the century. My man Lars doesn't go so well. I don't care that he fell back at this point. And it's good I, if you want a better expert. Right, exactly. In fact, I do care. I'm glad he did. Right. And look, we're not saying that he's a world beater, but he's going to get these two-turn races at Saratoga, and the two-turn race at Saratoga, mile 16th, mile and eighth, even mile 3 16th, they're a totally different dynamic than these races, and also we see more competitive paces up there. My man Lars has ability. He's getting it done up there. Let's see. Let's hope at a, a decent price, too. One more race to bring you uh, on this segment. We'll go to the ninth race on Wednesday. We're going to look at the three somewhere over the rainbow. This is a three-lifetime claimer going six on the inner. And this is where people watching the show are going to have to go off to Oz or wherever it is that I live and follow horses because you're going to have to sort of bear with me. The summer over the rainbow, the three in this race, in those white and, and red silks. We'll highlight her here. You're going to have to try to watch her. She'll be the one who makes that the widest of all move and the earliest move of anybody in here. You're going to have to sort of buy my feelings on this horse. She had one turf race earlier in her two-year-old career. It was a stake race at Monmouth at a mile. I felt she ran well that day, making a very wide, premature move. It's a race way back worth going to look at if you have her lifetime PPs. The thing that I found interesting about this race is not only in there you see, somewhere over the rainbow, another horse in the clear in a turf race making the wide premature move. The first, second, third, and fourth finishers in this race were all lined up on the rail behind each other. You've got the horse who finishes fourth, the lead. You've got the horse who finishes second right behind her. The horse who wins it right behind her, the horse who is actually the horse who finished third was behind her. The horse who finishes second is behind that one. And this horse, somewhere over the rainbow, making this ridiculous wide premature move. Yeah, you make an excellent point here, Ray. Dynamics definitely favoring the inside horses here and somewhere over the rainbow after having a little bit of a steady on the backstretch has to go wide and uh, really took off on the rider there and made that ridiculous premature wide move around the turn still fighting it out here but uh, is going to fade to about mid pack finishes six in here and just like my man Lars another horse where you're almost glad that they don't finish up so well because you can bet them back next time at a decent price I agree I agree and she didn't certainly didn't run that badly you have to say she ran 10th or 12th or so and you know a lot of these turf races as much as who wins them is is how are they run or look look to see in the race was there a specific way that everybody or most of the best finishers ran if that's the case you know that's the dynamic anyhow that does it for this episode of trips and traps once again that email is trips and traps at nairainc.com keep the emails coming we love hearing from you we appreciate you watching and come on back for the next segment